Wow, this software is so cool. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Uh, can we get to the tutorial? Uh, can, can I, I get, get my, my voice back? Yeah, so that's that. Let me show you how to quickly set it up. Okada's live voice changer client is free and open source software that you can use to change your voice live and then route the audio to any app you want. For example, to Discord. This software can work on GPUs that have less than 8GB of VRAM and it's very easy to set up and use. The GitHub repository for the program is documented in Japanese, however there is also an English translation available for most of the materials that you can find in there. Besides being able to work locally, the Okada Voice Changer client can also work on a remote PC. If for instance you're a streamer and you want to use the voice changer live, you could run the voice conversion process on another machine on your local network for better performance. In this guide though, we'll be focusing on running the voice changer on one PC only. Head over to the Okada voice changer repository and scroll down to this section. I will link this page in the description below. If you're using an Nvidia GPU like me, you're gonna have to pick the version supporting CUDA. If you're using an AMD graphics card or Intel integrated graphics, you're gonna have to pick the one with support for direct ML. In this table, you'll find all of the software versions listed. As things are now, all of these Hugging Face links will take you to the very same Hugging Face repository with all the releases mixed up. So let's click on one of them. After you've moved into the Hugging Face repository, select the appropriate software version and download it. You can check the full file names of all the release packages by hovering your mouse over them, like I'm doing here. As you can see, there are also Mac versions available. Once again, as I'm using an Nvidia GPU here, I'm going to pick the latest version with CUDA support. Once the zip archive containing the software is downloaded, right-click it to extract it to your chosen directory. Now locate and run the file named start underscore HTTP to initiate the installation process. Make sure that you've chosen the correct file. After you double-click it to run it, get through the unrecognized app window prompt and the installer should start downloading all of the dependencies the software needs to run. I'm going to speed this up here, but it shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Of course, as always, it will depend on your network connection quality and speed. Once the installer finishes its work, the voice changer client should start automatically. Now a Windows security prompt should open. On Windows 10, it will look something like this. It will ask you if you want to grant network access to this app. Network access is needed if you'd like to be able to run the voice changer on a remote PC, which as I've mentioned before, is possible. Click on allow and you're all set. And just like that, the installation process is finished. One last thing before we start using the software. Consider donating to the developer for the hard work he's put into this program. It really does take some time and knowledge to create software like this. Now in the main program window, the very first things you'll probably notice will be the default voices listed above and the large start and stop buttons. There is only one more thing to do now. In the audio input section, select the microphone you're using and in the output, your main computer speakers. As I'm using a rather non-standard audio setup on my computer, I'm going to choose the virtual audio cable input as my microphone and my external audio interface as my output speakers. Once you've set up your input and output, click on the first default voice avatar in the top section to select it, and once it loads, hit the start button. If your audio setup is working correctly, after speaking into your mic, you should now be able to hear your changed voice coming out of your chosen output device, with a little bit of latency. To try and decrease the latency at the cost of lower conversion accuracy, you can lower the chunk or extra setting values, which we're going to talk about in a very short while. As a short demonstration of the initial voice setup, here's me trying not to speed jam myself. If your voice is too low, if your voice is too low, then you need to up the tune setting. Then you need to up the tune setting. Is it better now? Is it better now? So we need to play around with this a little bit. So we need to play around with this a little bit. Just to find the sweet spot. Just to find the sweet spot. As you can hear, it's still not perfect. As you can hear, it's still not perfect. There are some audio artifacts. There are some audio artifacts. But that really will depend on a model you'll choose to use. But that really will depend on a model you choose to use. Once you get the hang of the software, you can also download and import additional voice models using the edit section here. Once you've downloaded a custom model, you simply need to select its type and when it comes to RVC models, additionally import its index file if applicable. Then it will get imported into the program right away. In just a little bit, I'll show you a few places online where you can get voice models to use with this software completely for free. And here is a model I trained using character voice lines sourced from a YouTube video. Training RVC models and other types of voice models isn't really that hard, however it has to be done using a different kind of software, which I might just cover in another video. Here is a custom voice I trained myself. Now that we have everything up and running, let's check out all of the other important settings that we can tweak here. The chunk setting that you can see here is probably one of the most important ones. The higher you set it, the larger chunk of audio will be converted at once. 
the higher it is, the more efficient and accurate the conversion process can get. However, it also increases the amount of time that will pass from the moment you say something to the moment it will actually become audible. The default setting gives you around half a second delay, but you can go even lower if you'd like to. The extra setting tells the software how much of the past audio data to include in the input during the conversion process. Again, the higher you set it, the more accurate can the conversion get, but it will also take more time. Upping the setting has the most impact on the final audio latency. And here you can select whether you want the software to use your GPU or your CPU for the voice conversion process. Down here is the server I.O. analyzer, which is simply a tool that lets you quickly record a sample of your voice and then play back both the original and the converted audio snippets for testing purposes. And up here we've got the built-in noise suppression tools. You can try and use this if you suspect that the low quality of your audio output and possible audio artifacts have something to do with the lower quality of your microphone input. In the F0 detection dropdown, you can select the pitch detection algorithm that the software is going to use. Refer to the table on the left if you're interested in experimenting with different ones available. Lastly, we have our input and output gain settings alongside with the tune setting, which I've already shown you. There are also other settings available here like the index ratio control, advanced settings menu and even a model merging option, however these aren't really essential in the casual use of the software. And now as promised, let's get to the voice model resources. As of now, there exist quite a few different websites on which you can download voice models in different formats, including RVC models alongside with index files. On sites like rvcmodels.com, voicemodels.com and of course on Hugging Face, you can find voices of various celebrities, video game and anime characters and much more. You can use the links in the video description to search for them all. People train and share models almost daily, so there's a high chance that you'll find the voices of your favorite characters already somewhere in there. And last things last, the very best news. As I've already mentioned in the very beginning of this video, this voice changer client can be used with any voice communication software such as Discord, Facebook Messenger and so on. The only thing you need to use it this way is a virtual audio cable software which will allow two programs on your PC to send audio between one another. I will link the free software I use for this purpose in the description as well. Once you install it, it's a matter of setting the virtual audio cable input as the output in the Okada voice changer and the virtual audio cable output as the microphone input in the voice communication software. It's just like you would be connecting two actual physical devices using an audio cable. Once the setup is complete, the audio will be routed from one program to the other. Here I'm showing you how I did it with Discord, however this will work exactly the same way with any other software that takes in audio input. Just remember about the audio delay. Half a second of additional delay can sometimes cause some communication problems, especially when there is already some natural network induced delay present. That's pretty much all you need to know. I hope you'll have just as much fun with this software as I had. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below and I try my best to answer them. I hope that all this was helpful to you. Leave a like or a comment if so and feel free to check out my other videos. See you next time. Bye!